How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to focus on the Atlantic hurricane season. More specifically on this tropical disturbance located just to the east of the Caribbean islands and determine if this does have a possibility of developing not only into tropical storm Gaston but potentially into hurricane Gaston as both of the two main computer models want to develop this into a hurricane in the very near future and we'll also briefly discuss about Hurricane Fiona which is likely to be become a major hurricane in the very near future but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more one lay content so let's begin by taking a look at the gfs computer model and as you can see here we have hurricane fiona which just made landfall in the dominican republic earlier um this morning and now it's going to move north what um northeastward eventually and develop into a major hurricane most likely however the tropical disturbance we're going to focus on in this video is just to the east of the leeward islands at this time and if we were to continue to move forward with what the gfs model is stating it wants to develop this into a tropical storm relatively quickly because by early by as early as the mid to late part of the week this week we have a tropical storm in our hands just to the east of the leeward islands and if i were to move even more forward into the future we see that it sort of maintains its strength for the most part there is going to be a moderate level of wind shear over this storm but it but the computer models are not forecasting that um, those upper level winds would be strong enough to necessarily disorganize this storm but if i were to move beyond the five day mark we see that the gfs model is very lenient on rapidly intensifying this eventually into a hurricane and it comes uncomfortably close to jamaica and cuba and if i were to move even more in the future we see that this moves not only northward close to the united states but this develops into a major hurricane dropping down 900 49 millibars which would certainly be a major concern for jamaica cuba and potentially the united states in the more long-term future where the gfs model in the very far distant future wants to take this close to the united states so this is definitely concerning especially since we have the european model also agreeing with the gfs model uh, models forecast taking a very similar strength and projected path with um potential tropical storm gaston as we see the european model does want to develop a tropical storm later than the gfs model however you see that the track is nearly indistinguishable from the gfs model at this time where we see the chop um that it maintains its strength for the most part in the caribbean before strengthening by the time i'd say it reaches the northwestern portion of the caribbean where we do see the european model wanting to develop a hurricane just like the gfs model and in fact does strengthen it and bring it nearly at the exact same point at where the gfs model wants to bring this storm right around the 10 day mark where we see the exact projected path and strength is very very similar between two which does raise a concern that there could be high certainty regarding the fact that this will develop into a tropical storm in the near future and potentially develop into quite a powerful hurricane but we're gonna need to take a look at several different factors of course the wind shear we're gonna need to pay close attention to um so for at least the next five days there should be a moderate level of wind shear throughout the southern caribbean as a result of this upper level high that's going to be just over that's just over hurricane fiona at this time it's going to linger around the dominican republic and puerto rico area where we're going to see upper level winds spiral around this upper level high which will enhance the wind shear right around the southern caribbean as the storm continues ahead further westward where we do see that wind shear is mostly light to moderate but like I said, the GFS model isn't forecasting the wind shear to necessarily be strong enough to disorganize the storm. This could definitely be wrong. This the forecast could change where the wind shear might be a little bit stronger than anticipated, depending on the position and the strength of this upper level high. However, it seems like the consensus from both of the computer models is that the wind shear will be relatively light and um or at the most moderate um winch uh, um we'll see moderate wind shear in the caribbean so we're gonna need to wait and see if that forecast stays the same but if this were the case if it does stay the same which is more likely at this time with both of the computer models agreeing on that then we should 
at the very least see a well-defined low pressure system move through the southern Caribbean with a good possibility of this developing into a tropical storm sometime during this period but I wouldn't expect necessarily a gradual intensification with this or a rapid intensification with this storm as at least as it moves through the southern Caribbean because there's still going to be a light to moderate amount of wind shear that will at least disorganize it enough to where it will be slow when it comes to strengthening as this heads for a westward to the southern caribbean but if i were to continue move forward the gfs model does forecast wind shear to lighten down to the point where the wind the upper level winds are nearly non-existent or the strong wind shear is nearly non-existent by the time this approaches the northwestern portion of the caribbean which is the reason why the gfs model in the european model want to strengthen this into a major hurricane eventually as a result of this light wind shear and if i were to show you guys the relative humidity over the next or uh, at least for the near future we, there is a little bit dry um there is expected to be a little bit of dry air just to the east of it however with the upper level winds being so weak and this dry and this stable air not being extremely concentrated in stability then it's unlikely that we're going to see this dry air be much of an inhibiting factor as it heads further westward as really the only inhibiting factor with um that would um come about in the caribbean for this um for potential tropical storm gets on would be the stronger upper level winds associated with it which at this point is more um we're more likely to see the wind shear be light to moderate so i do expect that the chance of a tropical storm is at least moderate at this time and i do expect that to increase once the once we approach a time for period where the storm is within the five-day window um um between now and the northwestern caribbean so this is at least something we're gonna need to pay close attention to because we could potentially see hurricane gaston if the conditions play out like the computer models are stating there's still uncertainty regarding that because potentially there could be a little bit more dry air than initially anticipated we're entering that time period into the fall where we do begin to see a higher amount of cold fronts moving through bringing a lot of stability to the northern atlantic so there is that possibility that maybe there's more dry air that could inhibit it than anticipated or at this upper level high that's located over the dominican republic is a little bit stronger than usual to where the wind shear would be stronger but um at but um, so we just gonna, go, go, we're just going to need to wait and see beyond the five day mark if that forecast maintains. However, between now and five days, I'd say we're a little bit more likely now that we're going to see tropical storm Gaston as it seems like both of the computer models are in pretty high agreement that the conditions will be just conducive enough and if, um, and if not just um, enough to where we'll see at least a well-defined low pressure system in the southern caribbean the gfs model wants to develop a tropical storm within the five-day window the european model isn't necessarily agreeing with that but still believes that there's going to be a well-defined low pressure system for uh, the recipe for a tropical storm to uh, exist beyond the five-day mark in the northwestern caribbean so that's at least something to keep in mind something to watch especially if you're in the caribbean islands like jamaica and cuba because we could potentially see a tropical storm or hurricane in our hands by next week and potentially the southern united states too with both the computer models agreeing that they want to take this further northward so we're just going to need to be aware of this over the next several days and i'll keep you guys updated as the certainty rises with the forecast now um uh, take a look at the current um five-day graphical tropical weather outlook and we do see that as of right now national hurricane center does believe the chance that this develops into a tropical storm is so low um between now and five days however it's on the higher end of low and i definitely would not be surprised that um i'm um, going into tomorrow the chance rises into a moderate chance and potentially a high chance um a little bit later during the week where the national hurricane center will um begins to detect that um this area in the northwestern caribbean which would be at the point beyond the five-day mark is a little bit more conducive for this to develop into tropical cyclones so i do expect this chance to rise so don't underestimate its tropical disturbance just because currently it's at a low chance of formation because we could it's more likely we're easily gonna see this chance rise as this disturbance continues ahead 
further westward and we do have this other disturbance which has a medium chance of development but the good news is that it's not, not really going to be any threat of land so i wouldn't worry about this too much and of course we have hurricane fiona which the good news is, is that it will say just to the east of the united states but it still could bring high a high rip current risk along the east coast and of course bermuda needs to pay close attention because this could directly impact you guys in bermuda so make sure to be aware if you're um in the island now um take a look at what the ensemble members are stating and take a look at what the gefs ensemble members are stating with this tropical disturbance it um, we do see that there's a wide array of possibilities. We have some ensemble members wanting to take this northward a little bit further eastward where it impacts more Cuba and potentially the east coast of Florida. However, we also see a wide array of ensemble members wanting to take this further westward to where maybe Cancun or the Yucatan Peninsula would get more involved. So still a lot of uncertainty regarding the track forecast really depends on how much ridging there will be and how, or how much of a weakness in ridging there will be to really determine when this will take this turn northward. But I'll make sure to keep you guys updated regarding um, any shifts in the track forecast over the next several days. Now, um, taking a look at um, my forecast when it comes to potential tropical storm Gaston. So this is my track forecast where I did state that the GFS model and the European model are developing Hurricane Gaston. I wanted to make that clear because we could potentially see a hurricane with our hands with this tropical disturbance. It's still far from certain at this time. Just keep that in mind but with both of the computer models nearly taking the exact same track and the ex um and forecasting this the servants of strengthen at nearly the exact same level then that definitely does raise certainty a little bit that we could potentially see hurricane gaston as i'd say there's maybe closer to a moderate chance we could see Hurricane Gaston out of this tropical disturbance. So Cuba and Jamaica needs to pay close attention to this. And I'd say um, the Southeast would at least want to be aware of this tropical disturbance, even though it's very far out from impacting you guys, because there is that possibility that this could move northward as a hurricane and impact you guys. So at least be aware of that scenario um, and keep and I'll keep you guys update regarding any shifts in the forecast when it comes to the surface. Now, taking a look at what else we're, um, we're tracking in the Atlantic, of course, we have Hurricane Fiona, which now has developed a well-defined eye, um, and it's borderline a Category 3 at this time with winds of around 105 miles per hour, and it's moving northwest, just uh, northwest of the Dominican Republic at this time, which, um, and it should eventually take that northeastern turn as a result of an incoming trough that's going to steer it out to sea however bermuda needs to pay close attention to this and um but hurricane fiona is expected to become a major hurricane as there just isn't enough wind shear and as you can see not a lot of dry air to inhibit this storm from shifting as it heads further um northeastward so definitely keep that in mind and of course we're watching invest 97l but it won't be any much of a major threat to land so i wouldn't worry about it too much in terms of what the gfs model is forecasting when it comes to hurricane fiona we do see that the gfs model wants to eventually strengthen this into a major hurricane where we see the pressure drop to 946 millibars and this comes uncomfortably close to bermuda so bermuda and you need to pay close attention to this for potential um for the potential of major impacts associated with hurricane fiona which is likely to become a major hurricane at this time as it passes potentially just to the northwest of you guys which would certainly be the best case scenario you don't want to see any direct impacts associated with hurricane fiona in bermuda's um but we're just gonna need to wait and see it's gonna be very difficult to forecast where exactly that eye will move but i'll make sure to keep you guys updated over the next couple of days regarding the track forecast for bermuda because it could be us um it could bring direct impacts to you guys and um of course pay attention to rip current risk along the east coast as wave heights should reach 10 feet in some areas so make sure if you're in an area where the rip current risk is high just make sure to stay out the water because it could easily save your life and um so yeah guys um i thank you guys for watching um make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys all have a great day